Howdy guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what we're going to do is show you guys something sort of fun for us. It's uh, how to apply stucco plaster over cinder block. Now I'll show you how we do it guys it's on, a, on a radius right here. This, this is actually really fun uh, because on a radius, say cinder block, how thick do you got to go? Usually one eighth to half inch and you put it one coat. On a wall, you do a scratch and brown. On cinder block, brick, stone, you only go what we call in the trades a skim coat. And that's one coat. You can put it on a couple times, but it's only one coat. Uh, on this radius, how thick will I have to go? Because it turns, and he did it. The fellow who did the block work, by the way, excellent job. He was down here grinding it, and I said, man, you're spoiling us. You're making it so we don't have very much to do. It, Depending on what you end up here with the grout determines how thick do you got to go. I'm looking at it, so I've already determined, because uh, I know what I'm doing, that I'm going to go about three quarters of an inch on this wall. Actually, that's about the same as I put on regular wood walls with wire, only because I've got to get this radius uh, real nice so that when the sun hits it, and we are in the hot sun, guys, the hot sun right now, if you do a radius and it's not straight, true and plumb, when you look at it in the sun, you'll see a bunch of waves and all that. We don't want that. Okay, guys, I'll show you something that I'm referring to as why we're skim coating the block wall that we're on today. You look at this wall. Now, you can see all the cinder block. In fact, my wife and I, we ride our bikes by here. She says, that's such a beautiful wall. You can see all the lines. And I say, if I did it, they wouldn't pay me. Well, the idea is what they did here, they did possibly three color coats. They color coated it once, came back and said, oh, you can see all the blocks. Tried it again, said, oh, you can see all the block. It looks like three to me, uh, but you still see when it gets wet, you'll get that. And plus we're getting hairline crackings of all the block. Over here is a real, um, it's an area that you can see it even more clearly. Is you can see the cinder block. And that's okay, it looks, it looks great. But this is what happens, fellas, if you do not apply a base coat. Now, on the radius we're doing, I'm going seven eighths. What does that mean? That means seven coats of this, uh, seven one eighth inch coats. On the flat walls, I'd have to do at least half inch. That would be four coats. Why do that? When you can skim coat it with Portland cement, which is a lot stronger than a cosmetic color coat. That's the idea. We don't want any block walls. If the Fellas at the shopping center see my after work and they see block walls, guess who's going back out there to fix it on their own cost? Me. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get started. Then Jay's going to put the camera down, maybe put, even put it on a tripod. That way he can get ahead of me and spread and I can use this Darby here to uh, match this thing out. Now, oh, by the way, I figured I'd give a shout out to my pal um, Dave, Evan Sign Company, that did this wall. They do a lot of signs. In fact, they do signs so well that his sign he had here, a beautiful wood sign, is gone. That's what happens if you do them too nice. They get stolen. Here, Dave, try doing simple, silly signs like this. Anyway, uh, Evan Sign Company, they're out of Vallejo. His telephone number is area code 707-332-7666. Anyway, that's my buddy Dave, and that man can do signs out of anything, wood, you name it, he does it. Anyhow, getting back to what we're about to do. What I do is, I took a water hose and I already wet this wall down a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna follow this radius. And this is best to have a couple guys spreading. I'm just gonna get it started here, then Jay's gonna set that camera up and he's gonna help me spread this out because we're going an inch thick, and even though I went ahead and wet this wall down, uh, it's, it's drying fast because we're going over cinder block in the hot sun. I was hoping we had a shady day here today, but no such luxury. And up here where I'm trying to get my radius, all that is, guys, is you fill it up fat, you take it that way, fill it up fat, and I'm going to use that as my template now. So anyway, that right there, and I, I can go like so, and any excess, scraping right off, using it as a, a knife, just cutting it off. Then they're going to put their caps on later. 
Anyhow, Jay, why don't you go ahead and see if you can set that up. That way you can get ahead of me. guys good tip too is while you're spreading it out give it that arc give it that so-called radius and like what we're having we we let our mud set a while it got a little stiff on us but nothing we can't handle um, Come sideways like that. And get that arc just right. Down here. You gotta put a little bit more mud, that's okay guys. Okay guys, now we're gonna miss these walls here. Then we're going to come in and put our first coat. And what I what I try to do because they're doing the caps at a later date is I'm getting my caps and I'm putting it on tight. And then Jason and I are going to put our next coats on here. First coat is on, and I'm just following the radius, making that arc. Make the arc. That'll set, and we throw our next coat underneath it. our arc okay guys this reminds me of that commercial it doesn't get any better than this it's about a 101 degrees and we're putting suckle on walls what more could you want out of life Best put away my little round trowel, my swimming pool trowel, because on the bottom here, if I had my swimming pool trowel, I wouldn't be able to cut that back right there.
where we got a little bit of a holiday right here. Easy peasy. We just take a little bit of mud. Oop. Fill that holiday up. Come around. Where it popped off, we just put a little bit more. No big deal if it pops off. Take it here. And now, when I take my Darby, it'll get that right out. Nothing to it, just takes practice. Okay guys, we're at a stage now where this is pretty set. What I want to do is I always give a little few slobbers over the top. And then what I do is I take my trout and I pull back this way, pull back this way. If I pull this way, then I'm going to break out my own corner. So I'm pulling back this way, pull back. Easy, nothing to it if you know how to do it. Okay, now this particular product says we can do scratch brown and color in a day. We are going to do that. We're going to do the color also. Can you zoom in over there on that particular building? Now that particular building is what we're going to match by the end of the day. Now getting back to what we're doing here right now. This particular product wants the walls hydrated. That means you've got to wet the walls. But I'm giving this a float finish anyhow. So what I'm doing is I'm using this sponge float and I'm wetting the walls literally with water and I'm floating it at the same time. This way it'll it'll dry out and cure. With this particular product depending on the weather you can do the next coat in say if it's a cementitious finish hour, hour and a half, two, as hot as it is today I can give it about an hour and a half but we're gonna take a long lunch and then come back for that other coat. There's another tip guys we don't have no corners on these radiuses so what I do is I put a lot of water on them a lot of water on the top then I come back and hit them it strengthens these radiuses inner and outer where there's no corners a lot of water guys uh, for my buddy who says hey where do you get those buckets that say stucco plastic I know you're kidding me but we work with a lot of companies and all those companies most times they take all our buckets, so I put stucco plastering on it so they know, hey, those are Kirk's, leave them alone. Anyway, lots of water, just like this. I'm, I can't put enough water on this. In fact, we're about another half hour from being done floating everything, then I'll show you how we hydrate it. Okay, guys, I'll show you the easy part now. We've, we've floated this like three times with water already. We're going to take a long lunch, then we're going to come back and color it but that's another story what I'm doing now is I'm hosing all the stuff off the top here hosing it all down I'm strengthening the stucco I'm what I'm wetting these walls it's called hydrating it you can call it hosing it down you can call it whatever you want it's a uh, technical term is hydrating so we hydrate this wall we just over and over we get all the stuff off because When, when they come back to do that cap, see they're going to come back and they're going to do a cap right here. And the cap's going to lay on here. Now, if I have a lot of stucco that's over here and they put the cap and they push it off, not only is a piece of my stucco going to come off, but a piece of my color coat as well. So we want this top flat. And would it be better to do the cap first? Absolutely. Of course, the cap's on order. It won't be here for another few months. So that's why we're here now. What I do is I... I wet everything down. We just completely saturate it over and over. This particular product uh, specifies this, especially if you're going to do two, uh, two coats same day. So we just back and forth. I'll show you one more thing, guys, before we call it a day or before we call it a lunch. If you want to get over here, Jay, on maybe even perhaps stand up in this, on this box. On this box here, guys, now, what we have done is, we've taken the stucco down, I just figured six inches, the dirt, and he said, yeah, six inches. So what we did is we just took it down a foot and a half. Just always better to be safe than sorry because uh, you never know. When they put the dirt in here in their plants, we don't want the bricks showing. I'll tell you a quick story, about 20 years ago, I did one of these and I only went down about eight inches. And the contractor, old fella, came and said, hey, Kirk, 
that's not going to work, man. This is not a planter box. It's a fish pond. It was similar to this, and I thought, a fish pond? And he says, yeah, you got to take it all the way to the bottom. And I thought, oh, man. Uh, we had to, I was thinking to myself, I got to cover all this stuff. And then he looked at me and said, ah, oh, I got you. I'm kidding, man. I thought, what an asshole. Anyway, <laughs> he got me on that one. But again, six inches here. Go a little bit further, guys, this way, just in case. You don't want to have to come back and redo everything. So anyway, guys, that's how you do cinder block the right way. There's a lot of things I couldn't explain because we're busy, man, trying to get this done on a hot, hot day. Anyhow, folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. We thank you for watching, and as usual, guys, we'll see you on the next one.